What's up, y'all? J.R. Raymond back again, coming to you from my recliner one more time. Well, it probably won't be the last time. But today we're going to take a look at match number two. We saw Brianna Cote and Verity Crawley. Brianna actually wins by a pen. Verity threw the last three to make it 221-222. We broke down a few of the things that Verity does well and does uh, and, and where she needs a little bit of improvement. Only in my opinion. I'm not one, uh, you know, I'm not going to pick on her. Obviously, she... Uh, like I said in the video, she adapts to what she sees out there, uh, and she's got some of the best coaches in the world down at Kegels. So um, I'm sure those are some things that have been addressed. Um, and there's just sometimes when you just you know your game, you know what you're capable of, and you just kind of stick to it, and you don't try to make any any big changes. So sometimes that's just what people do, and that's okay. So we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at the uh, match number two with Jordan Richard here against Brianna Cote, and we're going to break that down again and see what Jordan has, see what she does a little bit different than the other girls here in a minute. Stay tuned. All right, so we've got the next match here. Including, of course, ball selection. We will uh, move on to watch. Do is a key. We're going to watch Champions one of these tips from Shannon O'Keefe quick. In this week's BCTV Tip of the Week. Hey, guys. Welcome to the BCTV Tip agree. of the Week. I am Shannon O'Keefe, and this week I want to talk about helping you maybe understand your arsenal just a little bit better. There are symmetricals and there are asymmetrical bowling balls. And the number one thing is being able to identify what those are just by looking at them. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is look at your ball, and if it has three markings on the ball, it's gonna have a pin, a CG, and a mass bias. That means it has an asymmetrical core on the inside. Conversely, if you're looking at a different type of ball, this would be a symmetrical ball. It's only gonna have a pin and a CG. There's a really quick way to identify what type of bowling ball and core you have in your bag immediately. The second important thing is making sure you're not spending your money and or space in your bag with the same bowling balls in there. There's been so many times that I've seen people's bowling ball arsenals and they will have two or three of the same type of bowling ball, whether that's a big symmetrical ball or a big asymmetrical ball. The best and most simplest way to build a well-rounded arsenal is you want to start with a big asymmetrical bowling ball and then a bigger symmetrical bowling ball. And then you're gonna go into a clean asym and then a clean symmetrical. Now I know that's only four bowling balls, but it really is gonna depend on the bowler from there, what extra ball you wanna add to your bag. For me, I'm always gonna lean more into the medium to stronger symmetrical bowling ball. I really hope this tip helps. Good yeah, so, and the reason she leans into the more stronger symmetrical bowling balls is because the asim balls will stop on her because she gets her hand around it quite a bit so it makes that asim core really make a strong motion and doesn't get through the pins as well anybody that really kind of i don't want to call it a spin but anybody that really rotates the ball with their hand on top of it um or on the side of it quite a bit they gen they generally don't want to use an asim ball because they don't need the help from the core to get the ball moving off of the friction the ASIM balls are generally for the people who are really far up the back or are uh, rubber rate challenged. So just keep that in mind when you're paying attention to the next bowling balls you want. You know, the, the, a lot of the ladies tend to go towards the symmetrical stuff because of that same exact reason, because their hand gets to the top side of it quite a bit. Or as you'll notice, most, get, or I'm sorry, a lot of the ladies go to the symmetrical and guys go to the symmetrical um, just because of the control, because of the rubber rate and the continuation. An ASIM won't continue the same as what a symmetrical. And that's kind of why I made the little smirk about what Carolyn was saying on the show yesterday or on the first first match, because she was saying the, the ASIM would continue a little bit better. And that's, uh, I mean, that's, a, that's rare. That, that's very rare that an ASIM ball would continue as well as a symmetrical ball. Because um, generally when that, extra part of the core tries to take over and that creates that wobble that wobble has to stabilize at some point and when it does finally stabilize that's when it makes it kind of that's why it does that hook stop kind of you know straight straighten out kind of thing um so that's just my two cents on it but let's watch this match there and we'll see you guys let's see what we got and shannon with another solid week finishing in sixth this week there you see jordan richard 
also a solid week. She's third, and she'll take on Brianna Cote next for the right to face Diana Zabialova in the PWBA St. Peter's. Richard. And as the higher seed, Jordan gets to decide who gets to go first, and she Rubicon. says, I'm going first. Which She's allows using her to a, finish on the right lane, a little bit stronger ball than what the other girls the were using. Probably is the better lane. She's got more hand and power, a little bit more ball speed. The, mm. you know, not gonna go. Well, what did Brianna Cote say during the break about that left lane? Let's see what it says. <laughs> I think that lane's getting tighter, and I'm definitely just chucking it to the right because I'm definitely not moving in, <laughs> which, which is true. It, it really is. I mean, you, you do want to stay near where that pattern is telling you to play. Jordan also, though, Jordan's got that outside end swing, swings it to the right, the rough, the end of the pattern. wants to make sure to clear the and hips, again, and then she tucks it back in. She does a pretty good job tucking it back in. Take a look at her hand. So Brianna Cote, who needed We've already seen Brianna. The the tenth, got it. She's going to stick with that RSTX2. Verity Crawley was starting to find her proper form near the end, so Brianna was fortunate. This there. was one of those balls that I never really gave much of a chance. It was in my bag a little bit, but it was too close to my Zen and my Dark Code, real close to the Dark Code. Maybe a little bit more flippy than the Dark Code. And you're starting to see what's going to be necessary to win here. She made that comment. She's doing the same thing on both lanes. You can see she has got all the area she needs to the right, especially on this right lane. And I like this ball on this lane. As you can see, she gets that one out almost to the two board. We talked about blowing the seven off the deck. Brianna averaged 225.38. Started the tournament in tenth, and after 18 games was in 11th. She said the left lane was getting tighter. Game, she ended up in the number four position, came on strong in the final block. Well, there's that troublesome left lane, and she masters it there with a mixer. But right here, what did she say? I'm going to chuck it to the right, and whether she increases her ball speed, she is continuing this angle and as you can see as soon as we hit that tracer it's almost right to the end of the tracer when she gets it out here it comes in just light i think that's the best reaction she needs to continue to use that part of the lane and either ball up or ball down depending on what she feels she needs to see and her hand definitely gets well, that's a better below seven. the equator let me see if i can back that up mm, come on now Con and she come on back up back up back up back up back up yeah that's gonna take forever if I do it that way oh my gosh it moves so all right here we go yeah so you can definitely see her hand is right at the equator or even a little bit below the equator of the ball opposed to the other girls where they get to the top side of it much much faster she does go to the top but she's rotating from the bottom so that's okay that's where you want to be you want to be and she could be even a little bit lower if she was to get her knees a little bit lower and then her body a little bit more upright she could get her hand more behind it she's already she already does a great job getting her hand behind it so there's not a problem there but you can see she's playing a little bit further left and not playing it, playing the ball as far to the right because she's using a stronger ball that's going to blend a little bit more. And she's going to use speed and power to get through there. So that's actually really, really good looking. I don't mind that at all, now, where her hand is. Sound. And it is surprising to see her not having as much Rubicon success because I feel like she kind of reminds me of like a Michelle Feldman. Michelle was that, the, you know, again, the lady that ball. really had the power and the strength her game. You talk about natural back talent. in the day. That right See, here, I think she just she gets a little forward. Lower elbow forward she, like she, a could get, Apayo, she could get a little bit stronger she if she would just stay back a little bit more. Behind that ball and but that means she still, she already throws it great. And pop, I mean, and creates ball speed naturally with no pull down. Really gets that index finger spread out. 
creates a little bit more rotation. Yeah, not left. her best there, and she noted yeah. the universal sign of disappointment is when the bowler stands stand right straight up. up at the foul line. Off her hand, she was way left of target. You, you know, so you can see if her hand was a little bit different here. Definitely. Yeah, so it's almost like uh, here you can see her hands off to the side a little bit more. It's like she was trying to make a foul line adjustment, try to spin it just a little bit to get it to go into the right because her body's out of position, trying to get it going in the right direction. So when her body's out of position, her, her subconscious says, oh, crap, I need to do something different. So then you kind of spin it a little bit, trying to kind of flick it to the right to get it over there. But it's one of those foul line adjustments that bowlers have. At least off the good hand, bowlers do. They develop that target. over time. You could see this ball right here almost right over the tracer way left of where she's playing the lanes and where brianna's playing the lanes you could see three six ten and i think that was a kind of a product of i just two pinned on this lane i want to make sure this one hooks in lincoln former pwba rookie of the year in 2018. They're always smiling, though. Last year with a new Goodness, company, how do you stay so positive all the time? Company, like after that shot, I'd be like, dude, what the F is wrong with you? <laughs> Seriously, what was that? <laughs> I'm so weird. I'm such an angry elf. Right. Wow. Yeah, that, that one didn't get like to the right like the other angle, one did. But a bit of a ringer on that ten pin. Just kind of hangs on there. She's obviously got room for error. Brianna, Brianna is definitely looking comfortable on both I lanes. Only got to about five. Right here, she even got that one in a little bit. So again, we see you know lane transitions every time the ball goes down the lane. And let me tell you, if you give her just a little bit of hold and a little bit of bump to the right, she's deadly. Who isn't? Everybody's deadly when they got a little room to the right and left. Well, most people. But all these ladies and every guy, if you give any professional bowler, woman or man, room for error, Routine. you're going you can follow the BWBA you're gonna see on some Facebook, strikes. Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and BowlTV.com to keep up with the greatest Yeah, guys, make sure you hit that like button for me, by the, the way, video, since they're doing their advertisement here. Hit that thumbs up. If you enjoy these videos, let me know. Break down these women. We'll do some guys. We'll do you know, a bunch of different bowlers. Maybe we'll do some of the junior PBA bowlers and stuff like that, too. I enjoy doing this. I think it's cool. Get to watch some bowling. I figured to myself, I'm like, well, I watch bowling all the time anyway. I might as well do some commentary and let people, you know, hear me break it down a little bit at the same time. Frame four up nine. Let's see if she gets this one to the right. Uh, yeah, I'm good, sir. There's the flat ten I've been looking for. Again, it looked like a good shot, but a quiet. So I've been kind of been there. seeing that coming. I the think she needs to, to go to a stronger right? ball. A little bit further right on this lane, then. Not Jordan, a flippier ball. Look at this. Something just a little bit stronger. Just a little bit. It gets past the tracer right here. You can see that ball got down the lane just a little bit further, just like it did in the tenth frame that first game. Comes in just a little late. I gotta take a potty break. Be right back. All right, we're back. Half pocket, Sorry for the delay. Once again, a makeable a split which second. I'm gonna wait till she shoots it before I say what I'm gonna say. She's been solid on those. And it, like we spoke about Shannon O'Keefe last week with her win, clean. These ladies are extremely. Extremely good spare shooters. So for everybody watching, especially our younger bowlers, I know it's cool to strike. <laughs> but I'm telling you that right here you're seeing that spares keep you in the game and put you in the I lead. mean, they've got to make a lot of spares because the patterns the they bowl on are yeah, tough. You know, shooting at a lot of spares because the patterns are so hard. I've seen some higher scores this year, though. And that uh, two-pin will stay up. So she just doesn't look she didn't comfortable. Like that shot off her hand. You could see it almost double dribbled. She, just she looked flings it she to the right. Got a little bit ahead of herself. So where's her hand get to here? See, she does a pretty good job with her shoulder. You will notice it doesn't fly back. 
Notice that shoulder not throwing her right shoulder forward, so she has the ability to open the lane up really nice. That's another key thing to power is if that left shoulder doesn't stay forward or quiet, you can, and then it, if it doesn't, it makes your right shoulder fly forward and it shuts you down and it really limits what you can do. But if it stays quiet, you can open up and you can create a little bit more power. Yeah, so she gets her hand, I'd say that's a little bit more off the side than what it was, but she flings it to the right. So she gets that about 13, 13 to about eh, three, four. Her body shot it way right. It just was a bad shot. Again, though, she leaves the two. But remember, the one that struck on that lane, she only got it to about six, seven down lane, and it struck. So it's definitely the the issue with using a stronger ball like Trouble that. Is it, it hits earlier, if she's able to catch which blends the back part of the line out. It doesn't give you quite the room the to the right. Greeter Harrisburg Open. That was in her rookie of the year season. She made five championship round finals and cashed in every event she entered, which is really something. Because you're always dealing with changing conditions, travel, time zones, etc., etc., etc. And to do it in a rookie year is really something. And this ball's got quite a bit of lane shine on it. So... They're obviously using the cleaner covers for a reason. Go, go. She asked, but it did She's not in deliver. limbo. That's not the right ball. She gets it to the Much right. It hangs. Shot. Gets it in. It hangs. Again, she's playing a little bit deeper. Doesn't obviously, get to the a lot bends. deeper. It's blending too much. And Brianna, right here, she's getting into about that eight nine area. So again, Brianna's trying to get it way out to still that two, three before the tracer. Jordan, you see her playing a little bit deeper. I like to see somebody go to more of a pearlized bowling ball. And contrary to what you just said, I did. Let's make Which that code mental Brianna is. To see what this does for the but I'd like to see Jordan go to a pearlized ball and just bang on it. Very unlike Maybe move Jordan. her feet a little bit left, yeah. throw it to the right, use her power to her advantage. Over under where she was going high or flat ten, it couldn't create the angle. She opted to move right and get on. You can see the sheen on her RSTX too, so she's not leaving it so dead flat, shiny. It didn't look like. Yeah. That, you know, that doesn't look like it's out of box shiny. It looks like she's touched it with a pad of some sort. Pattern. She mentioned that specifically to me and tried to do it there. So Cote now with a chance to expand. It's left. Oh, I like that. was that. left, that but that taking was your gift the lane right. And, running away with it. and again, Brianna's playing the lanes the way she likes to play them. She said her game plan is not to continue to move left too soon. She wants to be able to stay as far right as possible. And again, either with her ball speed or her hand, create that as the lane transition. That's the Walter Ray mindset right there. One of the, the right. greatest to ever do it. Right he was here. really good at setting the lane up. Um, for the TV show to allow him to just play a certain part of the lane, you, you know and he would just throw it harder when he needed to. The tenth frame, if Create that Brianna angle and get the ball to go through the ahead. pins the right way, and he was tough to beat shot, on TV. I would throw that ball, but you throw on the right lane, on the left lane. Okay, she may do that. And this has been her left lane ball consistently. And why change? <laughs> that one didn't get as far to the right, so she must have shut her angle down a little bit. She saw that little bit of hang there and said, you know what, I'm going to use that. Closed her angle down just a pinch and just threw it a little bit harder. It's just enough to get it to go through the fins the right way. I like it. Smart. If that's what she actually did. I mean, I, there's been many times I've fallen into the right move because I miss, and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to keep throwing it there then. Make my adjustment off that if it's going to give me that. Hi, Diana. You obviously like this building. What will be your key to success tonight? My key is going to be to stay patient and do what I did all week long. Everybody says the same thing. Okay. That's Stay nice patient. Make shots. Stay in the Thank moment. You, Diana. I like it. Thank we you. appreciate it as always, and good luck in the next match. Not me. What's your keys to victory? Well, Diana was I'm going to throw a chair at somebody, was, uh, <laughs> take their legs out, and <laughs> hopefully they can't bowl. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't do that, kids. Don't do that. 
I do want to see somebody get mad enough to where they take the ball return because they always make those ball returns different than what they actually are for the center. So it's like the PBA or PWBA or USBC's ball return for the TV show, and they're just light like carpet. Oh, this one isn't. They didn't do it here. Woo, see ya. Jeez. But usually, like the PBA, they'd have like the Geico one. That's just like cardboard that just sits up over the over the ball return. I just see somebody just grab that and chuck People it down the line. Watching, don't forget, you just <laughs> sat through a commercial break. That's number one. And she's on an open. And she gets up and makes this shot. That's what you need to do is clear your mind and refocus on what is Yeah, the if she wants to stay in that ball, she's going to have to rotate her hand around right it. She's there, then got to get her hand up onto the, the top of it. And making sure you make the best shot you can. Well, if she doesn't want to do a pearl. Well, she knew right away that wasn't the angle to take, and she's got a big problem. She's trying to this jam it in there. She made that comment in booth. the interview that the left lane looked to be getting a little tricky, which it is, but definitely not getting it far enough right, trying to play just a little bit, not trying to play deeper, but she keeps missing just a little left on that left lane and paid the price. Then she missed the six pin. So she takes an eight in that seventh frame, and all of a sudden, Without having thrown a ball, Brianna Cote's lead has expanded to four. See, I wonder wins. if these ball reps out here, lane play is different for ladies than it is for the men. So I wonder if the ball reps are kind of suggesting moves based off of what they would do rather than what would work for the ladies. Curious on that. strong tournament. It was wide open for that final game. Ooh, snap of perfection. I, I'm telling you from What did she do different there? Because that ball, to me, looked a lot like, holy cow, that one got to the right, that might flat 10. Come on, my backup button is slow. Beep, 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 beep. So, so yeah, that thing just picked up. It just went dead left. Ooh, yeah, super top. So she's like, look how much higher off the top of the ball she is compared to Jordan. Like just way on the top, basically spinning it down the lane, which is where this big reaction comes from. I mean, it just goes. It says, you know, I'm going left now. So that's a combination of the asymmetry of the ball and, uh, you know, kind of spinning it. I don't want to call it a spin because, I, I'm telling you from game but, I mean, one. Okay, Brianna it is a spin. She is kind of spin. She lanes a certain way and had a game plan. And again, we've talked about it. She has not really veered off the beaten path. She just keeps trying to get it further right, not really getting around it. Again, those two shots on the left lane, right? Not getting around it. What are you talking about? Great reaction. Ball is reading right before I mean, maybe that that's tracer. Up back compared to what and she's, she's used to seeing. I don't know. Pin carry on the light hit and the hot flush. Nobody wants to get it right on that lane. Back there besides that 3610, you see the 9 pin as well. You can see Sorry. she definitely Pinky got out. around that one. You could see even by her hand. You could see more of her palm. Spin, palm up at the baby, top of spin. Her hand right here. You could see hits about 8, 9, closer to that tracer. So that's more shot than equipment, right? Yep, that's just a bad shot. Look at how she got around that. You could see by her hand. Her hand, when she's behind it and then rolls through it, is more... Um, I'm trying to explain it. So almost like the Pete Weber, like on the side, right? Okay, you, you know, this way, that one, yes. she almost, you could see the top of her hand go up, and that's when you knew you got her, she got around it. This one's not a lot of fun, but boy, you cannot do it any better than that. That's not possible. And she stays clean. <laughs> she knows, but you know, you can get away with it when you're up by 51. It's okay. And I'm going to have to find a better way to explain that because I saw it, but I have to figure it out well, on how to explain I, that. I, but. You showed it to me. Anyway. Just think about it, Carol. Yeah, yeah, You'll get there. Put you on camera You'll get there. I promise. It made sense to me. See, she's doing a really good job staying through it on that one. 
It's almost like she's trying to flick it to the right on the left line, and it's causing her to miss left. Or when she does get it going to the right, because she's flicking it, it spins too far down the line. There's a fun watch. The WNBA. A bunch of people walk, run back and forth shooting layups. I don't know, maybe I'm just weird. I have a hard time watching women's basketball. See, it just scoots down lane. That is her third two pin of this game. And I like the angle on that shot. I like the way she threw it. I think right there, if she had another game or, you know, she was winning this match, I would make a one and one to the right or She's a quick. two and one and see what she, what, oh, what kind of reaction she would have. I don't think, I mean, you could probably she move right, but I would have preferred moving left and slowing down. Use her power. Uh, so it took some and I think that's what everybody suggests show. for her all that's the time. Maybe that's why she struggles at times is they're all just, well, everybody's playing right. You need to move right. No, use the power to your advantage. Slow down, twirl it up, and move left. Get left of everybody. You have the hand to do it. Everybody else does not. They're breaking the lanes down to the right for you. Why not use that to your advantage? The day we see a two-handed woman who's any good, they might just run this tour over. They'll be the Belmo of the women. And Brianna Cote is using the lanes very effectively. She's 2-0 and oh so far. We'll take on Diana Zavialova and brings out some extra equipment. Where did I hear that was a good idea? Coming up, match number three, Brianna Cote has advanced. Oh, Marshall breaks. Come on, moving forward. I don't know if they're going to show us the end of this match. I don't think they did. No, 224, the So they're not showing it to us, Diana. but that's okay. Let me get to my look here so you can see a big difference between those two games jordan has a much more powerful game even though it didn't look like it her ball reaction wasn't nearly as good because i think she struggled with getting her ball to read in the right spot the left lane caught her up or the left lane the ball would hook early and then almost look like it speed up like there was a speed bump down there and it would two pin and make her come light and then when she'd try to make sure it got there she'd just yank it to the left on the right line, she was okay. She could float it over there. Her hand would stay through it, and it would pick up. I just don't think it was the right ball. I think she could have used... Uh, I mean, it could have been the right ball if she would have moved left and slowed down, I think. Um, because speeding up wasn't working. Because you could see in the beginning of the match, she was further right and throwing it harder. And she still had that, you know, that, that hang to the right, hang in the middle type of reaction because of her ball speed. So... I would have liked to see her move a little bit further left and go around the lane a bit more, but that's just me. I would have used her power to her advantage. Whereas Brianna, exactly like she said, she's like, well, I'm just going to spin it up and I'm going to stay right and I'm going to throw it faster because this ball, using a pearl ball, is going to come off the spot. So she did a pretty good job. But anyway, that's match two. That's these two bowlers. Um, uh, I think now we get to take a look at Diana Zavialova. Zavialova. I, I don't, probably didn't say that right. Uh, and Brianna Cote against each other here in a minute. So we'll see you guys for the next one probably tomorrow. Take care.